When a seizure patient rolls in, your diagnostic path follows a strict hierarchy. We don't jump straight to the MRI. We follow the rule of exclusion. Step one, stabilize. First priority one, if the patient is actively seizing on the table, forget the paperwork. You must stop the seizure. The ABCs, protect the airway and ensure oxygenation. The vitals, check the body temperature immediately. Prolonged seizures cause hyperthermia that cooks the brain. The quick fix, always, always check a quick blood glucose. If they are hypoglycemic, a shot of dextrose stops the seizure instantly. Step two, the minimum database. Once stable, we hunt for extracranial causes. This requires a full minimum database, CBC and chemistry. We are looking for liver failure, kidney failure, or electrolyte derangements, calcium, sodium, potassium. Urinalysis, to rule out toxin excretion or metabolic waste issues. Liver function. Clinical pearl. In young dogs, especially Yorkies or Schnauzers, run bile acids or ammonia levels. A liver shunt, or PSS, is a classic cause of seizures after eating. Step three, specific diagnostics. Next, we widen the net based on history. Blood pressure. Severe hypertension can cause hypertensive encephalopathy and seizures. Infectious disease. In cats, status checks for FELV and FIV are mandatory. Toxins. If the history supports it, screen for specific toxins like ethylene glycol or lead. Step four, advanced imaging and CSF. If the blood work is clean, the problem is likely intracranial. This is where we reach for advanced diagnostics. When to recommend this? If the pet is less than one year old, suspect congenital. If the pet is greater than five years old, suspect tumor. If there are abnormal neurologic deficits between seizures. The gold standard. MRI is far superior to CT for looking at soft tissue brain pathology. CSF tap. After ruling out high intracranial pressure, a spinal tap helps diagnose inflammatory diseases like GME or infectious encephalitis.